This week on Dumb Pitches, Liz Glazer is back. Yes, Emmy, Emmy? <laughs> Dummy nominated. Uh, Liz Glazer is back, and we talk drugs and museums and maybe a combination of the two. It's a great episode. Here we go, Dumb Pitches. What a bunch of dumb pitches. Oh, my God. Welcome to another episode of Dumb Pitches with Monica Nevy. I'm Monica Nevy, your host. This is the show where we talk to successful people about their worst ideas. I am so happy. In studio guest, a returner. Yeah. This is happening now. We're having returning guests. Oh, that's nice. Which is great. Well, Liz Glazer here. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. No, I got excited (laughs) too. This is what, because like... um, you know, we do the dummies at the end of the year. Congratulations yes, on you. your nomination. Thank you. you know? Thank you. <laughs> um, and so I think some people are coming back with like, oh, I, I can oh, do it again. And yeah. I got another idea. So, but I'm happy to have you oh, thank back. You. Thanks for being here. Totally. And, uh, and thank yeah, you. definitely congratulations on your nomination. Oh, thanks. That's um, a real, it is a real honor. <laughs> I was so excited. Well, because like at the end of the year, I think um, Maybe, you know, everybody has a version of this, but like at the end of the year for stand-ups and other entertainers, it's always like the lists of like Yeah, specials like, and yeah, comics to watch right, and whatever right. and, else. And yeah. I'm never on any of them. Yeah. And that's fine. Neither am I. Yeah. I mean, and I've yeah. never been on a stand up like you should watch this person, which sure. does always I'm just like, Oh, that's not a big deal. It yeah, does bother I think me, but people like, should watch you. At you. the end of every year. Our list so far. Totally. The two of us. Yes, so, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so but people like you should watch every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's just always it's nice yeah. because that's the time. I, I always forget even that those lists are a thing. Mm-hmm. And then I'm reminded by, you know, social media and whatever. Right. And so it was just very nice. So thank you. Yeah. No, I love it. And and it's, you know, they get to choose. So they, they go through all the episodes that they've seen that year and which yeah. ones they like the best and fit them into categories and stuff. And so yeah. um, it's really fun fun for me to go back and see mm. you know what episodes we did but yes. also which ones people liked and yeah. what ones they remember you know like you yeah. listen to a podcast a lot or whatever yeah. and but certain things stick out sure for the whole year and so yeah well that's also it's a great way of utilizing end of the year listing mm-hmm. you know because I always feel like I don't know, you read people's posts and then it's like, you know, here's a list of brags right. from the year. Yeah. And I'm just like, who asked you to post this? Right. No. Um, and you feel yeah. a pressure to post it. I like, know. you don't have to. That's right, fine. right. Like, and yeah. It, yeah, and I don't mean it like it's bad to or not to. Yeah. I'm just, I always feel a way about it. Yeah. And then, then people do stuff with the end of year list that's innovative enough to not cause that sort of feeling yeah. like where it's like oh this was like a genuine opportunity that this person took to revisit whatever they'd done in yeah. the last year um as opposed to just like listing things in order you know it's like you could have a diary yeah also like sometimes <laughs> do you ever think that I, I post my often... favorite pages from my diary at the end of the year <laughs> <laughs> well I just always like and I mean this actually not exactly like about friends on the internet like do you are you a member of local groups online yeah Mm. me too and like there are people who post to like the neighborhood facebook group that i'm just like this was a text like this was a text to a neighbor or to your mom or something like that and it's like i'm just blasting it to the town yeah i think it really I like to be a part of the local groups because it, it it brings me back down to like what yes. normal people are doing because you get so inundated oh, totally. with comedy postings. Right. So you, you know, it's listening, to be like, sure. Cheryl's I not up that. for any lists, you know, like that's what, and she's <laughs> yeah. worried about her plants or Correct. whatever. So I would like to hear yes. about it. Yeah. And I, I love, I love local gossip. I love local, like yes. if there's, and I live in a town, right. you know, that's like pretty sleepy, even though it's outside of a city and whatever, similar right, to, right, right. to you, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so it's like if there's, you know, police somewhere, I'm just like, what's happening? You know, yes. I love it. Oh, I'm always pulling up. Me the curtain, too. Which we have some interesting neighbors across the street. Oh, so we got lots of stuff okay. to pay attention to. But do people write about them on the boards? Sometimes. Yeah. And well, we get a lot of, we're close to military base. Uh-huh. And then close to a stadium like that has our oh. minor league team. Okay. So almost all summer is, was mm-hmm. that fireworks or gunshots? Got it. Yeah, we have those too. Usually it's fireworks. But yeah. Yeah, same. Thankfully. Often gunshots. Right. Um, but uh, our neighbors, like we text our neighbors right next door yeah. when something good's going on across the street. Oh, yeah. Punch through his own window at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. Wow. Oh, let's let's see how this yeah, plays totally. out. You know? Yeah, totally. That's my whole afternoon right oh, there. That's great. Yeah. So great. I think I wrote a blog about it. <laughs> that's fun. Do you actively blog? Um, I have a sub stack. And so sometimes. Oh, so I want to start one. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good yeah. exercise. I don't do it as much as I should, but this has been like, a, oh, twice a month this sure. year would be good. Yeah. Um, some of it is about, you know, like comedy stuff, whatever. Yeah. But some of it is more like. I can't write fiction, but uh-huh. it's like a fan- romanticized truth, yeah. you know, story kind of thing. Right. And so I have a lot about the gas station ladies that we have a gas station close to us in there. Oh. I love them. Yeah. Oh, they're the best. And so they're now ladies. Kind of, yeah. Nice. Them. And I've almost huh. like made them into characters. Sure. Of, and so I tell stories that way. So I'll often kind of tell stories about what's going on with the neighbors or in the neighborhood oh. through the gas station ladies. Yes. Um, Smart. Category. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have a neighbor across the street, Vicky, and she's also gay. Nice. And I, I love her a lot. Like she's one of my closest friends. And like, I wasn't, you know, I didn't think like moving into a block that you'd like meet one of your closest friends right. and her wife as well. Like we're, you know, our fam- families, our friends and whatever. Um, but Vicky specifically, like we like storms. I love when it's raining. That's why I love Seattle in, in part. There are a lot and of reasons. I love Seattle. Yeah. yeah. And she's, she's like, did you, do you have radar apps on your phone? And I'm like, I'm I'm getting them. I'm getting them right now. Which yeah, ones exactly. Do you recommend right, totally. And so <laughs> you know, it's the most fun when I get a text from Vicky, who's like, "There's a storm front coming in." She doesn't sound anything I was like say, that. I love this voice you're doing <laughs> yeah, for her. Totally. But, yeah. <laughs> Real right. storm dad. No, if it's especially this time of year here, yeah, uh, snowish could sure. could snow could those types of things. I'm definitely I got apps for that. Yeah, and watching outside and <laughs> yeah, you know I. Aaron makes fun of me because I get up so often to like look out the window if it's supposed to snow or not. You oh, know? totally. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, that's so fun. It's great. Yeah. You know, well, then we were talking about this right before we started, but last time mm-hmm. you were on, you weren't a parent and now you are right. a parent. And that yeah. really kind of changes a lot of things. I mean, duh, yeah. of course, whatever, it changes your life, sure. but it kind of changes your interests a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Yes. It'll get more as she gets older, but yeah. um, I can't, I'm, I mean, I say I can't wait and I don't mean that literally because I can yeah. wait mm-hmm. and I'm really trying to, like everybody says, it goes so fast yeah, or whatever, savor yeah. every moment. And yeah. I'm, I really am trying, mm-hmm. you know, um, because I don't know how else. To savor a moment other than to remember that it's what I'm supposed to do. Right. And then when you're savoring it, you're like, but am I being weird right now? Because yeah, I'm probably. doing that, you know, like, is am I making this always. a weird moment for everyone because I'm savoring it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's probably <laughs> the moment before you have the thought to savor a moment is probably the, the moment that you savor, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I don't know. You know, because I don't think that the moment right after that is, that's a wash. Right, that's not the one. And now you're thinking about it differently. Yeah. So then it's like it's, you're not really present the way you were. Totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was in a museum like two days ago, which honestly, I paid $22 to have somewhere to sit and not be weird. <laughs> I mean, and I was weird, but I was no, just like, yeah, I get what you know, yeah, yeah. and I always feel like in museums, my inner monologue is like, do I get it? I think I get it. Maybe I don't get it. Like, uh, what am I supposed to be learning here? Right, you know, yeah. and my favorite exhibit, which was not one at all, there was an elevator and through the elevator, this was a modern like design right. kind of place. So the elevator was all glass and the wall in front of the elevator was also all glass and it looked across like air to an office Mm -hmm. that was like part of the running of the museum. 
And the office, you could really only see between two slits of uh, curtains. So there was like a, like this much office that you could see, and that was the most interesting thing in the entire office <laughs> like, for me. What's going on? In yeah, there? or in the entire museum for me because I was just like, huh, people at work, and like that's when I started thinking. I was like, I go to a museum because I feel like I'm supposed to. Yeah, but really, the thing like my ideal museum would be everybody's house on my block mm. is open. <laughs> And you could just walk in. You could just go in and yeah. look at what they're up to. Right? Because that would be like legitimately fun. I would be savoring every one of those moments. That is pretty. I like that. I mean, I do it's think. The most I know fun. we haven't even gotten into bad ideas, but this is a pretty yeah. good. <laughs> because I've been feeling lately. Yeah. Like we're we're very separated mm -hmm. as people sure. by social media and stuff, and then you get yeah. face to face with someone when we're working on the road or whatever, and you're like, yes. oh, these are just normal. Everyone's fine. Everyone, right. calm down a little bit. We're okay. Yeah, totally. And it, maybe it, the more you can see about everyone's like real life, yeah, the more connected you could, yes, be. So that yes. would be just yeah. That's so interesting. I would, I love, would love that. I'm so interested in other people. I think it's a thing with comedy because I went from being an athlete and having a team and yeah. everything going on in their life you knew and mm -hmm. you were a part of it sometimes right. and those things too I worked at you know boys and girls clubs so you still had co-workers yeah. and some of that and I mean yeah. when you're working with kids too there's a lot of yeah what's going on with them what's going on with their parents yeah you know interesting sure to yeah. being alone most of the time yep. and not have you know you have comedy friends and stuff and you mm -hmm. check in with but it's not the same and there's definitely comedy drama but you're not as like yeah right in front of you you can right. be removed from it pretty easily hopefully so i'm like asking yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> asking you know my wife what's going on at the bank because oh yeah know, i want to know what's yeah. up with her bosses a hundred percent jobs well, or whatever they're up to my wife works at a synagogue and it's the most interesting Ooh, yeah. to me is like, you know, just, I mean, and it's just regular office stuff, you know, but like. Yeah, but we don't really get that. So right. I'm interested in it. And I she's am always so like, in. Why do you care? And yeah. Because like, I don't have anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, there's a reason I think the office was as successful as it was because it's just like that kind of regular but hilarious in its regularity yeah. type of interaction and the awkwardness therein. I'll be honest. My yeah. parents are Jim and Pam. I mean, that's, uh, well, actually my mom's name is Pam, but yeah. they were, my mom huh. was married to someone else that they also worked with similar really? to Roy. Yeah. yeah. And then they got divorced and they were just friends, my parents. And, you mm -hmm. know, she had like tried to, hook him up with her friends and other stuff. And wow. then eventually they, which huh. grossly, he says we're friends with benefits, but okay. then, you know, it <laughs> Enough. went up from there. <laughs> he posted and that in his local Facebook yeah, group too. But she's very sweet. He's yeah. funny, you know, whatever. It huh. kind of is. So watching that show is like, oh, wait, this is. This I is loved this. after um, they canceled the wedding, Roy's and Pam's, mm -hmm. and he comes in with food from the wedding for lunch and he's like <laughs> chicken or fish <laughs> it's like one of my favorite so jokes i mean it's show. a great show regardless yeah. but you're on to something and yeah. that you are really interested in other especially when i don't think anybody tells you that like you know what we're supposed to do yeah in parentheses whatever right. is have a family get a house have yeah. a job all those things once yeah. you do that you still like want to be yeah connected to a community yeah but i also yeah. don't want the interesting drama to be ours you know oh like yeah I, I would just, right yeah, other people are having problems that's yeah good, you know? like, yeah that's totally <laughs> no i just i love like yeah kind of small town like stuff like yeah. even if it's not i mean you know arguably where we live isn't that small or whatever it is right. but like if you're able if if i'm able to think of it as like this kind of little place that everybody goes into work and it's similar to like you know the office or um parks and rec like that kind yeah. of vibe yeah it's there's a fun about that at least for me this could be okay i know again yeah. i know this wasn't intended to be one of your are we, ideas are we gonna pitch but a show? i kind of like the, yeah well i really like the museum idea oh yeah of, of people's houses because oh yeah maybe it would be beneficial mm -hmm. to have like homes from different 
places that we're, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like everyone's like, oh, these apartments in New York are so much right. like this. And it's like, okay, this is the actual thing. Or <laughs> yeah. these houses you can afford in the middle of nowhere, but yeah. everybody's whatever, racist or whatever you think. Right. That, right. And then you go yes. show that house, you know, and then you could just go through like Ikea. I love uh-huh. Ikea. You I know? know. Well, Ikea, Ooh. I'm just like, why doesn't anyone do a show <laughs> in an Ikea? Because as a person who's like done improv, watched improv, like, you know, just around those spaces. I'm just like, this is a whole immersive theatrical experience. And you could just have like different scenes in different rooms yeah. of the oh, Ikea. Oh, just like going on. For yeah. People to walk through it. And and then you sell stuff oh, really? oh. because it's Ikea. Yeah. Like and you could see the integrity of correct. the product too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> does this glass actually break? <laughs> you know, see. <laughs> when you're fighting with your partner. Right. You exactly. <laughs> but I think that that would be such a interesting um experience like i would buy a ticket to that yeah absolutely you know i would act in that ikea is one of the places where i really loved as a kid for that reason uh-huh. like because i just it felt like i was i could have a room like this it would be cool mm-hmm. you know that i equally love that same experience as an adult mm-hmm. and there's not that mm-hmm. many things that i feel like equally yeah. as excited about but right. ikea is really one of those things well and it's interesting <laughs> you say that in the same conversation as museums because i feel like museums are supposed to be like An equally interesting thing. oh yeah well because you take like field trips right. from school to a museum right and then you're you go there i guess as an adult but again i mean and i don't i i'm always a little self-conscious to having this take on museums because i'm not i'm not trying to be like anti-intellectual or uncultured yeah i'm not saying it's not exciting to be in the same room as great art and I recognize the benefit of like having museums and also that's how I feel when I'm in them I think there's something about like every time I've gone to a museum I kind of only remember one thing yeah you know like the whole experience is supposed to be in you oh okay yeah 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 but (laughs) I don't ever feel like I'm getting what the other people are getting like I have a different experience and then the one time I went to like a famous i went to the prado in spain and the garden of earthly delights is there and that one i will remember forever because it's huge okay and you never know that's the one thing about like paintings and sculptures yeah seeing a picture of it online sure even if somebody's standing next to it is not the same as like seeing it in real life yeah which is great but i still even in that like famous museum yeah i only remember that i feel like if i were an artist who painted what i would do is install a fake camera Mm. somewhere right from the view of uh the mona lisa and paint the people looking at the mona lisa because to me i remember seeing that painting and the thing that was astounding to me was the crowd around yeah you know it's similar like there's this um you know about Richard Feynman he's like a physicist and I don't know that much about him but I I've heard the name yeah he's really like know. very eccentric and famous okay. and whatever and I specifically I had a neighbor once for a few years when I was living in Chicago John Lee who's fantastic and a friend hey John, hey, John. and he <laughs> went through years, like a couple of years where he was obsessed with Richard Feynman. Like, and John is hilarious. Like we had a kind of Kramer Seinfeld Mm. relationship in the sense that we were next door neighbors in an apartment building and we left our doors open for each other. And And yeah, yeah, so it was like, Hey John, Hey, you know, like my cat Jack would just like walk into John's apartment. (laughs) Like, Oh, I live here too. You know, anyway. And John really loves cats and whatever. Anyway. So it was a fun relationship and I love him to this day and I don't know if he's still obsessed with Richard Feynman but at the time he was so I heard a lot about Richard Feynman and one time he was like can I just show you a video and it was 88 minutes long and I was like John that is a movie night that's not a video but I watched a lot of stuff about Richard Feynman uh inflection on the weird place there and um one thing that is like so he was a physics professor I think by job Mm -hmm. And he was a really interesting guy who, like, wrote stuff and did art 
kind of on the side and like his legacy it seems is as much about physics as it is about stuff he wrote that was sort of about the wonder of learning okay. which was like related to physics and the scientific method but it it also comprised other things which is to say that a good introduction to the thing that I was thinking about which is that he would apparently go to strip clubs and draw the patrons and so there are these like art collections of his that are people in a strip club. Yeah. And so I was thinking about that when I was thinking about the painting of the people looking at the Mona Lisa because yeah. it seems very that. But that's, I mean, I feel like that plays well into the idea of being interested in other people because yeah. Yeah. that to me, yeah, if I'm at a strip club, is probably more entertaining to see Who's oh, here? Totally. Who shouldn't be here? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you hiding? You know, right. like those things. Yes. That is a great, yeah. <laughs> and a great reason to be like, oh, I have to go to this strip club for my <laughs> art, you know? It's work. It's great. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I think we're really onto something. But <laughs> me too. We <laughs> got derailed by such oh, totally. interesting things. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have an, uh, an, an actual bad idea you yeah, wanted to I share? Did. Okay. So there was one night um, in, I think it was. It was either 2015 or 16. And to set the stage, for that time in my life, I was A, still doing drugs. Mm -hmm. Doing drugs, and like my drug doing, um, so last time I was here, I talked about doing Adderall. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't think this, like my drugs experiences all were like, could I take life up to an a million? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like that was my motivation for doing drugs okay. It's just like, I want to touch the sun. I want to like know myself. I want to peel back layers right. to like this living experience. Everything. Yeah, okay. exactly. And so, uh, and, and like I'm sober, not because I don't like drugs. I'm sober because drugs are great. Yeah. And I still believe that drugs are great and I don't even have the like, thing in sobriety where I'm like I wish I could have them I think I just got to a point I don't know that it was exactly rock bottom like and I'm fine to say that it is but I'm just like trying to accurately depict it you know and and I just think like it got to a point that I I would do drugs in order to like learn something and then my therapist who I still see to this day uh, at that time was like, okay, I believe you that you want to do ayahuasca to learn something. But like, arguably, if you're doing these drugs over and over and over again, you're not, you're becoming like somebody who does drugs. Right. You're not like really learning a new thing. Cause like you also have your brain and your memory, <clears throat> thankfully. And so if you learned a lesson on a drug, you can then remember that lesson right. and appreciate it. Yeah. And I, I that was probably the single most powerful thing to me becoming sober is her saying that because yeah. it basically was like, you, you have these. Yeah, yeah, you did it. And like you get to keep these memories yeah. of drugs. And so, you know, whatever. So, and I don't regret like every single time I did any drug, but like the Adderall experience from last time, which I recommend that podcast from it's last great, year. Great listen. Um, yeah. And you. I Dummy mean, nominee. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and so this one, um, so I did Molly. Okay. I did a gram of Molly in an, I know, is same. Or? It's, you know what it is? It's the adorable Ziploc baggie okay. full of drugs. Oh, that's yeah. pretty. That's Which, like, as a side note on those Ziplocs, like, they're so cute. They are. So cute. Like, every time I see one on the ground in a park, I'm just like, I, is this, like, from a dollhouse? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know. It is so cute. Well, that's funny. Yeah. I was thinking about it the other day. Yeah. I loved, I love small, I still love small, I love it's a nice. small utensil. Miniatures, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so as a kid, I had seen yeah. small bags and been like, oh, that's so cute. It's so cute. Like little, but then you're, yeah. now you're like, that's the only thing it's for. <laughs> like, drugs. It's just for drugs. Yeah, but I wonder, like I had doll houses when I was little and really liked yeah, them. Yeah, and dolls so... could have been on drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so, okay, or they're like IKEA bags for doll houses. There you but. go, IKEA, bringing it back. Um, so, 
Okay. Okay. I did. Which it seems like a considerable amount. It was like the full supply that I purchased from a drug dealer who came to my house. Okay. Um, on other business. I had a roommate and she was like buying weed. And then I was like, I'll take a gram of Molly. And the, the thing that I wanted to do it for was at the time I had been enrolled in a screenwriting class um, to write a show or whatever, like a pilot. And I didn't attend any of the screenwriting classes because I was probably like on other drugs or like chasing women or, you know, just like doing stuff that I was doing more of at that time. And I just couldn't like ever find my way there. But also and this was like pre pandemic, pre zoom, but all of the classes were recorded. Oh. And so I had a link to watch them. And of course I had been procrastinating watching them in the same way I'd been procrastinating going to the class itself. But I was like, I'm going to take all of this drugs and I'm going to watch the class all tonight. And it's going to be like, cause that's like the way that I thought of drugs is like, yeah, you know, which like, is not how most people do. And especially you're yeah. saying Molly is yeah. necessarily the drug that I would be like, okay. I mean, you add her all what you are already right. doing. So that, but even like a, I don't know, I've never heard someone go, I'm going to do cocaine and study, but I'm sure somebody has. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you said that, but for Molly, yeah, which is, I don't, I mean, I don't know why anybody watching wouldn't really know, but it's ecstasy and it's, you yeah. Know, it's well, so I was like, well, maybe this will, yeah, this will cause me to love, Just love my uh, screenplay <laughs> and like, you know, really open class. me up. Yeah. Right. And so whatever. Okay. So I take the drugs, I'm settling in and I watch about 10 minutes of this class. So I see like the teacher, this guy, Jacob, and he's like, you know, Hey, welcome to screenwriting, whatever. And then like 10 minutes into the experience, I'm like, I think my own thoughts are more interesting. Got it. I'm going to take, I was living in Brooklyn at the time. I'm like, I'm just going to take the subway and. Oh, I, so we leave. We don't even, after yeah. 10 minutes, we're done. 10 minutes. Okay. I'm like, maybe I just need to have an experience and like whatever. And I was, I believe I was going to a sex and love addicts anonymous meeting. Cause I was like, there is one at 10 30 tonight. Maybe I should go. And, um, <laughs> not, so I, was, I mean, I guess, well, I don't know. You're not supposed to be, on drugs when yeah, you I don't any think type it's, of anonymous Right, meeting, but. but they don't kick you out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's there's it's a part great of the deal. You're not right, supposed to. Maria Bamford yeah, joke about such like a good joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could we'll be shoveling out. ice cream with a with a, a CD. stolen porn DVD. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> keep coming back. Yeah. So yeah, so there's that, definitely that. But I was like I think it was more just like, oh, maybe it would be a good idea to leave my home and go to this place. And so basically what it was, was a destination, a uh, wedding, not really. No, I don't know why I said that. That's the first <laughs> thing that came out of my mouth. <laughs> so I was like, um, it'd be funny if there was a wedding at sex and love addicts anonymous. <laughs> like this is the meeting we met. Of all meetings. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And so, um, so I went to like the address, which was a church in times square. How are you feeling at this point? So after, on the subway, I was feeling the way that I, I, like, I loved doing any kinds of drugs and going on the subway. Okay. I would say that almost in a hundred percent of the time that was true of, of drug doing mm -hmm. is just like, wouldn't it be fun to like be in public? Even though most of my thoughts were, does everyone know that yeah. I'm high? But like, even so I was like, this is amazing. And I can listen to music and like, I'm in the world. And isn't this so fun? And the other thing that was happening on specifically Molly, specifically this night was I was like, oh my God, I'm getting so many downloads in my brain. I'm going to have to write them down. Mm. And I remember that because I didn't bring paper and pen with me. I may have had a pen in my bag, but I had to like find a paper towel. Somehow I found a paper towel maybe on the train. Gross. But like, yeah. I was like, I need to write on this. So I was just like writing f feverishly, like beautiful mind style. Like I just have to get it all <laughs> out, whatever. And so, and then I'm, I'm at Times Square. I'm like walking and I have to stop like every few steps and write, write more stuff else. down. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm like, this is my pilot. Like, you know, I'm doing it. Okay. You know? So this is, are, is, are yeah. these what these ideas are? Is for the yeah, pilot or is always. it just random? Well, shit? I'm always like, well, I don't see you. Okay. So you started with yeah. wanting to do the class. And yeah. So and then I'm like, I'm doing it. Yeah. Right. Right. Got it. And so I just keep writing 
And then I'm, you know, walking around for like towards the meeting, maybe for another, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. And I get to the meeting location and I'm like, I think that this, this is a bad, like maybe this entire night is a bad idea, but this is a really bad idea Okay, um, to go to the meeting. So right. I didn't go to the meeting. Okay. Okay. And uh, I was like, well, I should maybe just go home. And so I... I go back to the train station and I'm on the platform and I see this guy walk by and I was like, that looks like the teacher of the class who I had never met in person. But I was like, I think that's him. So I was like, Jacob? And he turns around and it's him. And I was just like, okay, um, I'm on a gram of Molly. And I, you're the last person who I saw, like, yeah. I mean, whose name I knew and whatever, because I took the drugs to watch your class, like, and all now night. here you are. And now you're here. Because I couldn't focus and, and right. watch the class. Totally. That is weird. That is a weird, like. It, it's like, I mean. Even if I wasn't on drugs, I'd be like, well, how weird did this happen? Right. And so he's like, I think you need to go home. Wait, did you tell him you were on drugs or he could just yeah. tell? Oh, no, no, told I, told, I told him everything. And he's like, I, I think you should go home. And so he takes me into the train and he's like, you know, the thing about writing is that the crazy resolves on the page. And so he's like, I think you should think about that. And I was like, right when he said that, I'm like, excuse me, I have to get my paper towel to write that down. <laughs> and I did. And, um, and then he's like, let me write this on my paper towel. That I've <laughs> correct. Uh, and, and so anyway, so uh, that, that was like what happened. And I still, you know, it's like, I, I do believe it was a bad idea mm -hmm. to like take the train and, or, you know, just to just take, take the, the Molly. Right. The, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's a confusing story for me because it's like, I, I kind of, I love it. Like, I love how I actually ran into him. Yeah. But it's like, is that a story about like why to do drugs? You don't know. Because you start <laughs> by being like, I like to do drugs to learn, Correct. which is a weird, maybe weird yeah. thing, right? Yeah. And then you give it a try. Here we go. We're gonna do these drugs and do this class that I'm actually a part of, and then you go, no, I want to be doing something, yeah. Which is kind of it's not the opposite of you know trying to do the class, but yeah. you think, oh, I can maybe I'll be more creative doing this, yeah. And then the way that it all. Like, if you had gone to that meeting, you yeah. wouldn't have run into him. That's and true. And I don't know what would have happened. But, yes. You know, and then you meet him and he kind of says something. So it's like. Right. You weren't wrong. I know. You know, so I get what you're saying of being like, yeah. is it a good idea? No. But is it, was it bad all together? No. Right. Do but it's kind of like, and I, I wonder about this too, like in terms of when you have kids, right? <clears throat> so it's like, I have a, I have an eight month old now. And I always want to be honest about like whatever drugs I've done and whatever. So it's like, is my message to my daughter do drugs once or, and then remember yeah. the lesson? Like, I'm, I'm just not sure. So, I mean, I, yeah. So I, I mean, one thing is that like, I still haven't finished. Well, I have, a, I've finished a script of a pilot, but not, it's not, not like the paper towel one. No. Different idea. Yeah. I mean, I guess like that could be a pilot. Episode. The next day when you look right. at the paper towel, is there stuff on there where you're like, oh, this is maybe. Okay. Yeah. Do you I have mean, it still? yeah. Yeah. I have all of those like scraps nice. of paper and everything. Oh. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that it was like super meaningful or whatever, but like, okay. yeah. Um, so I, I guess I don't really know like what to do with that story because it's kind of like, it's a fate based outcome right that is astounding yeah like and it's not the case that like after being off of drugs i'm less astonished that i ran into like it felt like the matrix was like yeah. revealing itself Absolutely. you know i mean it's in that 
just listening to it a little bit, you're like, what? yeah, yeah, right. And so I don't like know. when you yelled yeah. his name. I thought that's not going to be him. It was him. It was going to be a weird thing that you did to yell yeah. someone's name who's not him. Correct. And it was him. It was him. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what it means. I have similar feelings about drugs and anything with kids in yeah. general. Our um, our son specifically, but yeah. you know his friends and stuff, and it's like. They're going to right. at some point, or maybe. I mean, he seems pretty nervous about it, which is great. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. you're not like what a gift. fucking nerd. Right. Um, you <laughs> know, no, but yeah, yeah, which I think I could see him being more like that, like a little bit scared. But you do want him to, like, not necessarily do drugs, but right. like experience things. It doesn't yeah. have to be substances, but like go to a party and have friends and yeah. be nervous you're going to get in trouble and yeah. you know have these experiences that kind of develop your character. I don't yeah. know. But then yeah. you also what a weird thing to force someone to do. So you I have know. to just be like we've taken it the same way and honest about ourselves. Yeah. But also like just like even like sex education stuff and things yeah. like that. Like we're you're supposed to use the correct terms and stuff. We sure. do that, but also we don't like. There's no shaming for yeah anything. Or well, that's I think I, as I k- think about parenting, because like parenting before you know a certain age is sort of theoretical, right? Right? Because like she's, I mean, she's not even crawling yet. You yeah. know what I mean? So there's only so much that like she's really doing right. independently. I'm ready to tell you so many things whenever <laughs> you're ready. <laughs> right. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I feel like the, everything before like four years old, it's sort of like open mic parenting. Yeah. And then like you're at like, four, well, we're not doing that. You're right. Like, that one didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and then, so it, I mean, and it, it'll always be this way. Uh huh. Um, uh, you know, they're still going to consume other information than just what you're telling them. Of course. You know, yeah. so you can only say, this is how we feel, or this was our experience with this yeah. and things. And then they'll go, oh, well, my teacher said this and yeah. my friend's parents said this, or sure. my friend did this, or I saw this on YouTube. Yeah. Um, which we don't do YouTube for that reason. But, oh, really? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. been an issue. Oh. Uh, but so there's still going to be other things kind uh-huh. of forming what they yeah think and you just have to hope that at least from a safety standpoint they remember what you've said and feel comfortable with it yeah um but it yeah like if i know what he's actually going to remember or do or whatever right yeah i mean he yeah he'll be fine but sure she'll be fine yeah 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 it's yeah um and i don't know what kids now think about drugs i know well i just get i mean and this is like just a very practical point and and but like the stuff with like fentanyl and all that like that's scary because then it's like okay you know like i i think of some of the like i remember i don't even know what this drug was but i got it in a store Mm -hmm. with a friend and it was like synthetic spice Maybe we had uh, Ken Hamlet talked about it on here, but oh. it's like, well, there was a few like you could get salvia in a, in the gas station, too, for a while. And they're right. very short lived, but yeah. it's like synthetic weed or something. Yeah. And you could get it at the gas station. But, yeah, we talked about spice. And it, it seemed I remember the day that I was on that with a friend of an ex and whatever. And I was like, something feels bad. Yeah. Like and and that was before the day where like. People would just die. Yeah, of like one time doing when a it thing. Is like, oh, see, have you ever seen Reefer Madness? Yes, okay. I did. Um, that idea that like mm-hmm. you're gonna smoke marijuana and then kill right. everyone or whatever, right. like that, right. you know, and that was supposed to scare. You. And it really did. I mean, obviously, I didn't watch that, but yeah. I think that idea works. Yeah, if that's what you want to do. But right now, I feel like it's pretty yeah. true. Like, not that you're gonna kill everybody, but you, it could easily die with some yeah. of this. Some of these drugs that, I mean, and I, in like high school and stuff, we didn't have access to cocaine and stuff as much, but there was weed and mushrooms was like Uh a thing that people were, and then drinking, obviously. Yeah. But even then you're like, okay, how do we make it so they're just like responsible enough that they don't hurt themselves or, you know, have it be this bigger issue. Yeah. It's, I don't know, you overanalyze it, but you're right in that it seems like now. Yeah. I haven't done drugs in like 
10 years because yeah. I don't, I'm kind of scared, but I think maybe that's the feeling is that I feel like I've gotten everything I was going to get out of it. Yeah. You know, I don't have any sort of like interest in it. Yeah. And now the one that floats around a little bit more is cocaine. Yeah. And I just yeah. don't even, it, it's right. not interesting to me in any way. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with it. It's like, I know people who just died because, and they thought they tested it or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a fun game to play. Right. What are you learning in that situation? Yeah, totally. No. Right. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this became a dare podcast. Yeah. We really, really like, don't do drugs <laughs> unless you're learning something. But even but now, it is a like, I don't, I, but I mean, I guess one, one way to think about that story on the back end is like, I'm not exactly sure what I learned mm -hmm. other than write the thing yeah. that I haven't really written yet. Yeah. And so query whether I actually learned that lesson. Yeah. And I think you could take, if you overanalyzed a little bit of like. Happy to. The fate part of it of being like, it's yeah. all going to happen the way it's supposed to happen or whatever, uh -huh. you know, no matter what you do. Cause that was a really weird. Yeah. Or, or maybe, you know, trusting your decisions of like yeah. you going and deciding not to go to that meeting yeah. allowed you to. Sure. Meet the fate that needed to happen that night. Yeah. But. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. When's the last time you did drugs? Um, January 3rd of 2018. Okay. Yeah. So that's what, Weed. Five, four years ago. Um, yeah. Well, like six, six. Six. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. No, no, no. Totally. Yeah. Um, I mean, and yeah, whatever. Weed and things right. like that. But um, that do you feel I don't know because I just as an adult now uh -huh. and I've told people this because I've had friends who like didn't do drugs when they were younger and are now I mean I'm talking like 40s 50s sure just now starting to do some harder drugs interesting and I just don't feel yeah connected to it at all yeah and I'm not saying everyone needs to do drugs at some time and and mm -hmm. then you'll be done with it because right. that's obviously not true for everybody right but I can't even like be like Oh, okay. I'll do a little bit with you guys because you're doing it now. I just don't feel like that. Yeah, I mean, does it feel like you've run out of like? Do you ever think about it anymore? No, I don't. Probably um, because you were interested in the learning part of it and not the. Yeah, and I was I was sufficiently like convinced at the time that I decided to give it up mm -hmm. about why that was better, and I think it breaks down to recognizing that I I did do drugs because I wanted to, you know, everything I've said, like take life up to a million, learn something, all that stuff. And there was this part of doing drugs that for me was like a shortcut, you know, like, oh, if I take this thing, my feeling, which is whatever it is right now, can change yeah. immediately. Got it, yeah. And that was attractive to me because there was something about however I was feeling at whatever time that, that was not enough, yeah. that, you know, and, and what I've learned through the experience of doing drugs is like that basically, yes, drugs can take me to some other place. And like, I used to say this thing where sometimes on stage, but like they basically like, I don't know if I would have quit my job if not for drugs, but I definitely wouldn't be able to continue being a comedian on drugs. Yeah. Like, or, or for that matter, carry out any plan. Right. That there is this thing where it's like, if I take a drug, I can visualize without limits some other bigger thing. But the doing it part is. Yeah. And so, and, and again, I mean, it sort of does feel like do drugs. You'll visualize <laughs> I know, the I thing. Keep, like, I'm like, are we, what are we saying? Yes or <laughs> right. no? I don't know. No, I don't know. I think it is complicated. Um, But I think like the thing about it that, that keeps me sober, I guess, is this kind of like there's a, a hijacking of a reward system in my brain, it feels like, where I am allowed to feel some kind of euphoria or ecstasy or whatever, and then it's not based on just a life experience that I engineered. Uh, well, I guess it is that. I did engineer it, but, like, naturally, I suppose. Right. Which I guess is, like, a tricky word because then it's like, what do you mean by naturally? You're saying, you know, it's a plant or, right. you know, whatever. But, like, I'm just saying, like, 
I want it. I think that my goal in my own life is to find a way to trust myself Mm. and to like mainline me. Yeah. Just regular. And so me is such a motivational pillow or something. That's pretty good. Yeah. And, and anything, I get what you're saying. And it's, um, when you're talking about changing the way you feel quickly, like taking something to be like, I don't want to feel like this or I want to feel more like whatever. Yeah. Then I am in control of that. And it's like, whatever you do the things you're supposed to do which yeah. is meditation and all that right, shit right. and then you should be in control in that in a similar way or yeah. you just feel the way you want to feel more often yeah it, it's just you have to work hard to do that instead of just yeah. doing something yeah so it's that's an interesting thing to take away from doing drugs is like what if I can feel like that on my own? How yeah. powerful do you feel? Right. And then not to be too hippy dippy, but kind of, you know, yeah. like, and I've always felt like that. I went through a period where I really needed to make some changes mm. and did all the stuff. Did I started exercising and yeah. writing these, you know, writing exercises and affirmations yeah. and meditation and mm. went, I went to like a psychic. I went to, mm-hmm. you know, whatever massage stuff and different mm-hmm. and crystals and whatever I was trying like anything yeah. you could try and yeah. when I got those glimpses Reiki that was what I was gonna oh. say uh when I got those glimpses of like I just feel good as me yeah it does I think feel better than yeah something else doing it for you yeah but because I knew that certain ways that I could feel because of doing substances of some sort yeah that's the only reason it was intriguing. If I didn't know that I could do that myself, then it wouldn't excite me in the same Mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How do we end this by being like, do drugs if you want to. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) And then then stop doing them eventually. Well, I I think that it, (laughs) it is actually like a very real conversation about how to think of one's drug doing experiences in a way that's not entirely negative yeah. nor entirely positive. I don't think everybody, and most people feel bad about it later. Like yeah. I had conversations with my dad sure. about what drugs we liked the best and yeah. his experiences with that and stuff. And there, and there's not, and I think it probably only comes with people who were able to, yeah, be, separate themselves eventually or yeah. not let it you know ruin your whole life or yeah. whatever sure maybe someone who that was their experience wouldn't be feeling the same way yeah. about this to kids being like oh sure give it a try right they might be like don't ever do it yeah or you know i mean whatever, i would say but. to anybody holding that adorable ziploc of <laughs> what i remember to be what the molly looked like don't ever do that because like whatever i mean this was just, it was a different time, and I just don't think that there was anything, yeah. like, that was, you know, going to take me out in yeah. there. Mm-hmm. But, like, now, I'd be like, stay away. Absolutely. Um, I think that, I mean, yeah, if you need a reason, that's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The, I think would be a good enough reason. But, yeah. Okay. So, I think the the, the moral <laughs> is, yeah, if you are doing drugs. Uh-huh. Whatever you've learned, yes, hold on to it. Yeah, write about it's it. Worse. Yeah, write it. Find down. a paper towel. Be confident in what you've written down, and then know that you don't need to get it again. You know, yeah. whatever you were given then is what was supposed to be given to yes, you. Yes, I agree with that. And then go through the museum of other people's houses. I think that's, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the way to go. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. <laughs> Where can people find you if they want to follow you? Oh, I know you'll yeah. be in Seattle this weekend. I will be. Yeah. yeah. Club comedy for, for uh, tonight, tomorrow night and the night after. And uh, yeah, dear Liz for nice. ticket links and whatever. Yeah. And so. you got a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah. In bunch. We're going to tape something in May. Yeah. So tape, taping go. it. So pack in South Orange, New Jersey oh, in, nice. on May 16th. That's so exciting. Yeah. Okay. Well, there Thanks. you go. Thank you so much. For oh, thank you. Being Monica. here. Loved it. Learned I love a lot. you. I love you. <laughs> um, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, join our membership. So you get these episodes a day early. Um, and there's a bunch of uh, other things on there. My specials both of them are on there for no ads and all that stuff. Um, If you're just listening, rate, review, subscribe, whatever, all those things. But right now you can just keep watching Dumb Pitches. You're weird. Yes.